Hello and welcome. Today we're working on trying to do a grade book in Excel using the percentage method. Now this is helpful for maybe teachers out there or people that are trying to figure out what grades are in a class. Hello, my name is Jeff from Finally Learn where I help you finally learn financial skills and Excel. Let's get started. Let's say we have the following students and one we can't really see all the student names so let's just widen this column by clicking and dragging here in between the B and the C. So we are almost there. So we have Mary Smith and John Jones and so on. And let's say our class, we have three exams, we have homework, we have a project, and we're trying to figure out what is the average for each student. Now, we're gonna assume that the exams made up, make up 60%, the homework makes up 30%, and the project makes up 10%. Obviously those percentages have to add up to equal 100%. Now, we're doing a straight 10-point scale, so 90s and above would be an A, 80s and above would be a B, 70s or a C, 60s or a D, and anything below that would be an F. So can we have this where it calculates the grade for us? Excel can do this. Once you set up this template, then it's easy to do it for other things. So just a little bit of work to set up the template, and you get a lot of work done with Excel. Now, one of the things we need to do is look at what we have. I put all the numbers in percentages except their whole numbers. I didn't use a percent. You certainly could do that. So remember, 94% would be 0.94. Um, you can format it for a percent or whatever. I just put it in ho as whole numbers. So the numbers would be from 0 to 100% basically. So you see that Mary Smith made a 94% on exam 1, a 79% on exam 3, and homework 93%. Now, to do this, one thing we have to do, anytime you have a group, so for example, exams are 60%, we have three exams, so we need to do an average of that group. So here's what we wanna do. In between exam three and, ex and the homework, we're going to add a column. So let's go to the homework column, and let's right click and just do insert, shift cells to the right, and we're gonna call this the exam average. AVG would be average and that's fine. So there's a function in Excel where we can average those three grades. So it is called the average function. We can start typing equals average. We can do that. I like to use the formula builder because it's easy to kind of see. So I'm going to hit up here the FX which is the function. So I'm going to search in the formula builder for average. This is going to be helpful when we figure out the grade. So average, all we need is a set of numbers. So we're going to do the set of numbers for Mary Smith, exam one, exam two, exam three, and you see it references the cell C9, D9, and E9. So let's hit enter. And I put it in the wrong place, so let me just go back and put it in the right place. Average, so these three, and we're done. Now, this says 88% it's probably not exactly 88%, so maybe on averages, I like to go two decimal places, but I like to see the number that I'm seeing rather than, oh, that's an 88.0, right? So you, know, you wanna know what that number is. So I'm just gonna use two decimal places when we have an average. Now, I have this um, average calculated. I want to calculate this all the way down. So one thing we can do, we could do Command C and then highlight all this and Command V. If you're on Windows, it'd be Control C, Control V. There's a better way to do it. Once you have the what they call the dancing ants, you know, this this cell is highlighted. We can copy this down by dragging it, and there's the average. Another way to do it is you can just double click, double left click, and it'll send it down. If there's a column to the left, so the average. Let's check for Anna Best. Let's check the average of 65, 64, and 88 is going to be 72.33. All right, so we need to do a little formula over here for the average. Now, we're going to take the exam average and say that 60%, the homework average is going to be 30%, and the project average is going to be 10%. Now, what if we had 10 homework problems that we have? Well, we need a final average for homework. We would have to average those 10 things or those 15 things or whatever they are. So 
I'm just doing a, a simple here, but you, what you want is end up with the exam average, the homework average, the project average, the participation average, anything that you have, just get the average of those grades. Whatever categories you have here, you, you need an average before you multiply it times that percentage. Now this is technically called a weighted average because it's weighted by 60, 30, and 10 percent. So let's show you how this works. We're going to take, start with equals, take the 87 percent, you know, 0.67 times the 60 percent. Now because I'm going to copy that down, I want to put dollar signs in front of that and the way you do that is with F4 and sometimes you, you might need to use function F4 because that puts dollar signs what that's going to do is it's going to take the F9 times the 60%, which is 87% times 60%, and then as we copy it down, let me show you how we copy it down. As we copy it down, do you see that Anna Best, we're going to take the her exam average times 60%. So we want the exam average to be a relative address, so it goes from F9 to F10, but we want the exam to be a relative address, uh, I'm sorry, an absolute address. We always want it to be 60%. Well, that is not our formula yet, so we're going to take that exam average times 60%, and then we're going to take, we're going to add to that the homework average of 93 times the 30%, we're going to make that absolute with F4, plus we want to add the 97% project average, or that's just the project, we had one project, times the 10%, we make that absolute also with F4. So it looks like that Mary Smith has a 90.2 average we might want to give maybe one more decimal place, 90.20, so we can see what's going on. And let me show you what the formula looks like. I'm going to go over here and use a function called formula text. So formula text, I can start typing it in and then hit tab. I'm going to point to that cell and you can see exactly what's in that cell. It is the exam average times the 60% the homework average times the 30 percent, the project average times the 10 percent. Now, homework and project, I didn't have to have an average of those, but that might be already an average. You might have 15 homework problems and you've already figured out here's your homework average. So you can see that's what that formula is and we'll copy it down. So what we have is we have students that made 90 percent, 77 percent, and so on. All right, now you might say, okay, I have a 10 point scale or I have a different scale. So you might want to have Excel, Excel can do this really easily, is to assign the grade. So let's do this. We're going to use a VLOOKUP function. So I'm going to um, show this. I'm going to show a formula text. Just get started with the formula text for what that first grade would be. There's going to be nothing in it right now. But we're going to use a function called VLOOKUP, which is vertical lookup, and it's perfect for using this little table right here. So I'm going to look for VLOOKUP. All right, so let's look at the arguments. We're going to look up the value of 90.20. Now, you know that's going to be an A because you look at this, say, in the 60s it's a D, in the 70s it's a C, in the 80s it's a B, 90s or a 90 or above it's an A. But Excel has to, you have to show Excel how that works. So the table array, we're going to show, highlight this that is uh, in shaded here, this little table, and we're going to pull from column two. So I'll just say column two. And the range lookup, we want, look all the way down here, we want a, a exact match would be false. We want it to be a closest match. We're not going to get exactly 90.0 or 80.0. We're going to get something like 86.5. So we want it to say true because we want a relative match. So if we've done it correctly then we have Mary Smith with a 90.2 gets an A. Now one thing we want to do we need to make this table array absolute. So let's go back and change this table array. Table array is going to be function F4 to make it absolute because we want that always to look at that same 
table array at the very top. So now we can copy this down and we can see we have um, a C for John Jones is 77.5%, that's a C. 77.1 is a C, 67% is a D. What if, let's just look at Carrie Jordan, let's say that she did not turn any homework, she made a zero on homework, so now that's 54.5% and that would be an F. So that's how you calculate this, um, the exam average, and then get to the final average, and then get a grade. Now you can do a couple of small things, just look at uh, what happens here. This is the percentage method, and that's a perfectly acceptable way to do the grades. You could certainly do uh, things like what's the average or the high or the low. Let's do that real quickly, and then we can sort by name or by other things. So let's do a couple more things here. So let's say we want the average for exam one, two, three, so on. So we're going to do um, equals average, start with the average, and we'll say I want the average of that column, close my parentheses, and that's 79. Now averages, we probably want to do, let's give it a couple of more numbers, and then we can slide this across if we want to. But let's do the minimum and the maximum. Um, so there is a function called minimum and a function called maximum, and it's just called min and max. So let's do, for the high, this is called the max function, and we want the max of these numbers. What's the highest grade on exam one is the question we're asking. And we don't have to, we know the grades are in whole numbers, but, but we might want to give decimals because we might need it for exam average or the final average or whatever. We're going to do the same thing for the low, and that's going to be called the min, or the minimum. So min and tab over, and these numbers right here, what's the smallest number? What is the lowest exam score on exam one? I'm going to give myself a couple more decimal places. Now, the power of Excel is you get to copy and paste, so we want the average for all these. Now, an average for A, B, and C is, is not going to work. Um, Jordan Carey, by the way, Carey Jordan, uh, I think she had a 90 average on um, homework, so let's restore that. So here is the average. So you say, well, how did we do on exam three? Well, the average was 80.75, the high grade was 95, and the low was 61. What about the class average? The high class average was 90%. Um, the, uh, the average was about 80 one and a half or 81 and two thirds, and the low average was 67%. So this is the percentage method. We can do a couple more things. You might say, hey, I want to sort by last name. I want to sort by other things. So what we can do is highlight just the table, not the um, average or the high or the low or anything. And if we go to the data ribbon, we can do a filter. And do you see we have headings here? So we might say, Hey, for um, the name, let's sort um, by name, and we can sort ascending, so it'll be the A, B, C order, rather than start with Z. So we can have Anna Best would be the first name listed, and Dalton, Johnson, Jones, Jordan, so on. And then all their grades are associated with that. You could say, hey, who has the best uh, exam three? And you could sort by exam three. You would sort by descending, you would say the highest number all the way to the lower. So hey, you can see that's 95 and 61. So that's how you do a grade book using the percentage method. The next one we'll do is a grade book if you did total points. You just assign total points. Everything's a percent of maybe 600 points or 1,000 points or whatever. Hey, if you like this, give me a thumbs up, and we'll see you on the next video.